coming. Yeah. I appreciate we got Gerard Gaskin. Yes, Gerard Gaskin. Yeah, you definitely uh one of my favorite photographers in ballroom. I uh me being a photographer myself, I really appreciate the arts. Um and I love like the intimate portraits that you get um you know at you know at the balls like it's anytime you get content and you take it away from what's specifically happening on the floor and yo you know as the ball is going pictures are nice too yes but like specifically those um portraits are amazing so i've uh, been a fan of your work ever since i first started noticing it so i'm really glad to you know have you here and just have this quick conversation with you we at the ball right now that's right we um are. so yeah first we're Tell me a little bit about yourself, about as far as like where you grew up, and how did you get introduced to first photography? Okay, yeah, man, I'm. I grew up right here in Queens. Right. Um, you know, well, I'm a Queens kid, pretty much true and true. I grew up in a huge housing complex right here in Queens called Left Rack City, um, and um, like I, I mean, so then you know, I was, I'm growing up, you know. I, I would like, was it like a rough I said, neighborhood? It was, you know. I mean, you know, at, at moments when it was rough, there were moments when it was rough, and then moments when it wasn't, right? I mean, you know, we've had multiple shootings and all that kind of stuff, like, and it was drug infested at at one point. So, um, from everybody that lives in New York, that tells me that they say sometimes, like, uh, the, how bad New York is is what like era. So sometimes they say like, oh, the early nineties is yes. wild. Yes. But then towards like the late nineties, it kind of cooled down a little that bit. That is exactly what happened. Okay. I would say the late eighties is mm -hmm. really when it was really, especially here in my neighborhood where I grew up in Left Rack City, that was really wild. Late eighties, early nineties. And you were born in the sixties? Yes. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah. I'm actually mm -hmm. 69. Exactly. Okay. Um, and, you know, I came, well, I'm originally from Trinidad and Tobago, right? And then my parents migrated to the United States. My mom came first, and then, my, then me, my dad, and my, I have an older brother and an older sister. How old were you uh, when you came over here? I was seven. Okay. Do you remember life over there? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Do you still um, go back over there time to time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still have family there, you know? Uh, not so much anymore. Because most of those people have passed away, you know, like my parents have passed away now. Now I'm, I'm a little old in the tooth. And I would say my generation, have, we've all basically moved to the U.S. or Canada, right? Yeah. Um, Even after, like, because um, I used to live in New York, like, years ago. And it was funny because I used to say, like, everybody that you meet from here has connections to somewhere else. Somewhere else. Be, the yes. Caribbeans or every, it seemed like everybody. Africa or wherever, right? Wherever. And, I mean... Yeah, and not only that, but even like the South or the Midwest or wherever, yeah. you know, people come Everybody to New York. Everybody is from somewhere else. Right. People come to New York to, to so-called make it, right? Right. Um, and, I mean, I was lucky enough to be here, but I was also, you know, uh, interested enough to then try to figure out how I could then make my own stand in the world, right? Yeah. I mean, because part of it is, for me anyway, doing what I do is trying to figure out how do I put my own spin on the world and how I leave a, a lasting legacy of, of, of who I was and what I saw, basically, right? That's what did your how, parents do for a living? Man, my parents would, one worked in the garment district. Okay. My mom worked in the garment district, and my dad basically uh, built, made tools, screwdrivers, uh, spanners, wrenches, that okay. kind of stuff, right? Um, they were basically layman i would say um and you i always think their professions uh influence what you do a little bit um i would say the reason I, the thing that i would say that that uh, has influenced me is the fact that i was from trinidad mm. and my father was very very much into carnival right and carnival and making costumes and that kind of stuff is very artistic right, right. and so that's what I would say um, is the artistic factor for me. And, and then my dad wanted to be an artist. My dad was trying to be a painter when he was young. Um, and, and if you think when I was 
pre like junior high school high school i was trying to be a cartoonist first mm. uh, before i got to photography I, I only got to photography when i got to college wow that's interesting so basically you've always had an affinity towards visual arts in some way yeah 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 okay. i mean you know i tried to do music man i tried to do lots of stuff <laughs> what know? kind of music uh no nah, man i just was trying to be a singer and, and would do more like kind of jazz. world world i wouldn't say jazz i would say kind of world music right there's uh, in between what what calypso music sounds like from the caribbean and then attach it to jazz but also t attach it to to what they were doing in England, you know, like English music. Like I was huge into a lot of English bands back in the seventies and eighties, like Thompson Twins and I'm trying to think of like obscure band, like wow. uh, Tears for Fears and bands like that. Right? Wow, I that, never even heard of some of those. Yeah, you, you'll have to look them up. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that that that's the kind of music, you know. There was another uh, band called. Uh, Man, I had that record war. Uh man, why am I blanking? Um, Who do you listen to the most today? Oh, the music I listen. Man, yeah. it's interesting. I, what kind of music I listen to? I, I listen to jazz more than I listen to anything else now. Mm -hmm. Like so, if you think, you know, uh, I mean, I'm a huge John Coltrane fan. If you think of what I want to do in photography, I want to riff like John Coltrane. Okay. Like I, I want to be experimental. And the sound be so so alive, right. you know, because I think uh, when you take pictures, you want you want it to be alive. It's interesting when I was talking about you know having this conversation with you. Right. I was thinking about the other photographers that I know who have taken pictures in ballroom, and I wanted to make sure that you had this uh, beautiful connection between the audience and the participants right and having both of those two things clash together right i hate to have just a silhouette of the performer alone to me that's useless right uh, i want i mean if you look at my pictures and you know you go on my site or whatever the important the, the ones that stand out are the images that have that connection between the audience and the participant if they that then i'm like uh I'm like, yeah i think just like uh just the basics of what taking a picture is just kind of like including the environment brings you into the picture more right so that makes sense like right you know when you go to a ball and you know somebody do their tens and it's real hot it's not just that person voguing or doing walk, walking or whatever they're doing. Right. It's the the the. Well, I mean, it's their house. It's their house, the house yelling, yelling. The commentator. Right. The, the commentator, DJ. Everything. Everything yes. just kind of comes together. It kind of makes a cake of, you know, entertainment really. So, how did you get introduced? I know you uh, you grew up uh, loving, you know, wanted to be a cartoonist. Now, how did you find ballroom? Man, I found Ballroom because I used to hang out on 42nd Street. Okay. Right, I mean, back in the day, you think in late 80s. No, not late 80s. Early 90s, right? Um, there used to be a place called Show World, right? And if you went into Show World, it was like a peep show. Okay. Um, and on the ground floor, they had these little booths where they showed dirty movies. Okay. Um, up on the top floor, they had real women doing the same peep show thing and then downstairs in the basement that trans women doing the same thing Things. it was and just separate we, yes so it was broken up into three floors and one day i went downstairs in the basement and then i was like oh what is this <laughs> and the the other interesting thing is i had a i have a cousin who uh were born on the same day Okay. And right around that same time, he came out. Okay. Right? Uh, he lived in Toronto, uh, and he came out to the whole family, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, and I, my family didn't really treat him very well. Oh, wow. To be honest, right? And what they do to him? 
I mean, they threw him out of the house, right? He lived at his parents' house, and his parents threw him out. I mean, How old was he at that time? 21. Yeah. Right? We, we, like I said, we're the same age, right? Literally, born the same day. Not only that, but his middle name is Gerard. That's how. So it's always been a connection there. You got it, right? So I was like, man, I, I need to see what's going on in the basement. My cousin coming out, I was like, man, I, and, and at the same time, I needed a project for my senior project at college, right? I was studying photography. At that point, I was going to Hunter College, and you need to do a senior project to ultimately graduate, right, uh, in photography, right? You had to work on a documentary project, and I was like, man, how, you know, man, this is the project that I want to work on. And I was lucky enough that I worked for a photographer at the time and the makeup artist that worked um, every once in a while was a, was a person who used to design clothes for most of the femme queens at the balls. It's a guy named Douglas Says. And the person who used to put him on was another makeup artist named Choir Fire who was Whitney Houston's main makeup artist back in the day right. and so when he was on the road with Whitney Houston he wouldn't work with the guy that I worked for right. he would work he, he would send Douglas to do makeup right and so I talked to choir fire and choir fire was like Douglas man you need to hang out with Douglas you need to talk to Douglas Douglas will introduce you to all of the the, the top uh femme queens right uh, and that's how it started. And if you see the, the new stuff that I just posted on Instagram okay. of those portraits of all the femme queens, I did that pre, that was like my senior project. Okay. So in turn, and I call them Douglas's girls because literally they were at that point all the main femme queens of the ballroom scenes. We're talking Tracy Africa, Octavia, Danielle, right. Anjane, Tanae. I mean, if you, you know, Keisha, Ebony, uh, man, I, I mean, I can go on and on. You can look on, on, my, on my Instagram page and you can see them, wow. right? So um, this next question, like, I can cut it out if you're uncomfortable with it, but what's your sexual orientation? No, that's not a problem, man. I'm, you know, I mean, I think it's interesting. The other interesting thing, well, I, I'm going to answer it, but I'm going to answer okay. it in a longer <laughs> right. I got period. Um, I, I mean... The other interesting thing was is that at that same time, right, when we're yeah. talking about my cousin coming out and right. all that kind of stuff, right, literally, I would say maybe four years before that, right, mm -hmm. I had a, an encounter um, with a brother. I mean, I grew up Catholic, right? And then if you know anything about the Catholic Church, the Catholic yeah. Church uh, yes. are notorious yes. for... And so in turn... My, um, also one of my things to actually photograph ballroom was to ultimately figure out what my sexual orientation was. Wow. Um, and I mean, I'm straight, you know, I have a, I'm married, I have a wife, my, I mean, me and my wife now are married 10 years. Uh, it's interesting, a lot of other ballroom people, um, you know, wanted to especially born I mean that's a long story but to say yeah I mean I'm married and I, I have a child and um, I, I would consider myself so heterosexual, heterosexual right okay. um, but I mean I I mean I love you ballroom right? you yeah yeah before. Okay. yeah right I mean definitely right so I, I believe that you know my my 28 29 years in ballroom um, you know, I mean, I was dear, but I love ballroom. Like, I mean, I mean, I mean. So would you consider yourself like, I guess, like the, the Q in the LGBTQ just because of your affiliation? To ballroom? Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I would say that, you know, I mean, because like I said, I mean, if anybody right. who, who knows ballroom, who's been around ballroom as long as I've been around ballroom right. and know me, right, um, you know, you know, I mean, I hope they've, they've never felt any kind of uh, energy that's negative, right? Right. From me or anything like that. I'm, I 
I mean, I'm loving and 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 I and and I also think that I mean, you know, I hope that I believe in myself as being a, a, a positive ally, right? right? In the process, okay. right? You consider yourself an ally, okay? Right. Okay. So that's dope. Well, um, how how did you? Okay, so you got introduced to uh, ballroom through that that uh yeah, what I, thing. What, yeah what i would say is when i was doing those portraits right that right you'll see um danielle revlon who at that point was one of the major mothers of the house of revlon right right um she's the one who brought me to my ball and if you look at if you ever see a picture of my book or even uh, I, I don't know if i have it on the website still there's this beautiful picture of Danielle in a car, and it's the first ball I ever went to with Danielle. I photographed him in the back of a, a gypsy cap, uh, taxi right. cab, and I remember when we got to the ball, you know, Danielle was huge, right? She's the mother of the house of Revlon. Right. You know, she's a, she was a judge at the ball, and the funny thing, it was, an, it was an awards ball like this ball. Right. We're talking... 1994 maybe 1995 uh and she walked in you know like is is danielle right and danielle was like you know they you know you know how to rope back in the day back in the nightclubs they got a rope dude the rope right. came in front of me and danielle grabbed me from behind the rope no 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 that's my photographer and if you think after that then i then had Con Blanche to the bras because you think Danielle is the one and then I met you know Jack and Andre and, and then I would say the people who, who who I would say are like my my my, my I call them my mentors right my ballroom mentors mm -hmm. you know you think of R.R. Hector Extravaganza who's passed away now there's a there's a there's a person named Derek Ebony um you know sean ebony i mean those are i would i would consider them my my queer mentors right right when i'm you know working on my when i was working on my book i would show them the pictures like and I, you know they would then nix it or not say you know you know they'd be like ah you know you know this person looks kind of bad and you know, you know so they, they worked it out because i mean i had you know i had almost 13 years of work Right, right. Um, before my book came out, right, right. Easy, right. So in turn, I had a lot. Yeah. Know? So in turn, I could people could be nixed out of it because it. I mean, I didn't have it. It wasn't a good picture of them, right? Right. You could you could be picking and choosing. Yeah. You know, you exactly. So much work. Right. Because you got so much work. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like the this book that I'm working on now, iconic. Uh, I've been working on it now for six or seven years now right it's not like i'm working on you gotta put in a lot of time because you have to make sure that you show everything right well, i mean you have to show for me now i have to show that there's a european influence you gotta show drag kings just like you can you have to show drag queens you gotta show people who only go up and drag you gotta you gotta show twisters you know you gotta show almost every category yeah right? if you don't then it's not it's not gonna feel complete exactly right okay and so, that's a very very important thing right i actually have a real a real important question about photography in general but first I, 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 this one question popped in my head by you being straight and you being in these gay spaces have you ever had a problem with people trying you or trying to like push themselves up on you in a sexual manner very early on yes yeah and right. how did you navigate around that without being disrespectful or were you uh, I don't know. well i mean you know i mean you know you, you basically you know i mean it's kind of you know it's interesting because most of the times when it has happened it's happening in a very very kind of down low kind of way you know no one is going to kind of be overtly uh thing right because there's no power dynamics between me and them right i mean I, to me which word to me to me sexual 
um, when, when it becomes this kind of predatorial space, right, it's much more around elders playing on children of the ballroom, right? I mean, to be honest, right, that's when it becomes kind of heavy handed. But if it's like, if it's like me and you, right, you're not going to come to me aggressively, right? So in turn, that's never going to happen, right? That makes sense. Right? Yeah. So it's only the, the, the young 19-year-old who's trying to feel themselves into what they are about. That's why I said to you early on, well, you know, when I started getting gray hair, all of that shit stopped. <laughs> you know? So, so uh, now, I, now I'm an elder. Like, I'm not a 20-year-old kid who's now coming with the camera, right? Early early on, I was tested, right? They were like, who are you? Why are you here? All of that kind of stuff, right? So even as a photographer, you still see no uh, power dynamic between, like, the pred predators and ballroom? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's... I mean, I'm a I'm a, a, a anthropologist, right? That's what photographers are, especially documentary photographers, right? We're anthropologists. We're here to observe what the hell is going on, right? You need to be, and not only that, but you need to know all the nuances about the space that you are photographing, right? If you don't know the nuances, you're only gonna get surface stuff, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You need to be able to know. I mean, that's like that's why it's important for for people who are in ballroom to, to document ballroom, right? Because they know the nuances sometimes even more than I do. Okay. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like even like if you think of like the drug use and all that other stuff, right? Yeah. Or, like I said, or even the context of of getting in and out of how you get in and out of friendships and how you get breaking out, right? Yeah. Like how you break up with somebody who was is another person in the house or, or when you break up and then you leave the house. All of those dynamics, I mean, shit, I mean, even watching the dynamics and not, not to be, you know, I'm not trying to be, but even watching the dynamics between, say, Jack and Andre after having a relationship of 25 years. Yeah, right? I don't know what's going on between them. Right, <laughs> exactly, right? Um, and I don't know either, but you know, I'm only watching, there. I'm watching it, right? I, I need to watch it, but I need to, I'm aware of it, right? Because I'm in ballroom for a really long time, right? right? I'm not somebody who just showed up yesterday and don't know about that dynamic, right? right? Don't know the dynamics about the house of Ebony. Don't know who Dre Ebony is, who the, or know who the, the new father of the house of Ebony is. Like you need to, I, you need to know all of those things. And part of it is that idea when you submerge yourself in the scene, right? Yeah. I submerge myself, like, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on on e almost every chat room that ballroom is. If they're having, if uh, if Kelly's having a, a program, I'm watching, you know? Yeah. Like, you're involved with it, you're a part of the community. Yeah. Not even just involved. Um, yeah. And I think that's beautiful because somebody who is straight could still be a part of the scene and still contribute to the same. Right. So how does your wife feel about, like, ballroom or, like... Well, she knew, I mean, she's been... She watches Paris is Burning. She and watches wife, Paris? She's watched Paris is, Paris is Burning. But also, my wife is a college professor. Okay. Right? And she teaches Paris is Burning in her class. Oh, wow. And what so, she teach? She teaches English, right? She's an English professor at a university called Colgate University. Okay. So, my my wife and I, of course, I brought her to a ball. I introduced her to Junior La Beja. like you know. So, it's not like you know, you know. Um, I was photographing balls for fifteen years before, twenty years before I met her. You know, right, right. Somewhere between fifteen and twenty years before I met her. So it's not like, you know, you already 
I mean, if you it's start dating somebody, life. it's part of who I am. Like, yeah. it's not like, you know, I mean, it's all over my website. It's like, you know, I mean, I'm not. Um, and, and if you, you know, if you Google me, it ballroom, ballroom photographs is going to come yeah. up. So there's not, there's no, hi I mean, you can't be hiding any of that. Has she ever felt um, insecure about that or? No, I mean, you know, I mean, I think part of it is, I mean, you know, you, I mean, you know, you, you have the tough, tough question, right? The, the, you know, I mean, you have to have that question, right? I yeah. mean, you know, who are you, you know, you know, what's your sexual orientation? How you, how are you going to deal with me? Um, are you going to leave me for? Yeah, right. exactly. Or well, whatever, right? Yeah. You, you're going to have that conversation, right? Yeah. Um, and um, we had that conversation. So it's not, um, I mean, of course, you know, now we're together 12 years. We married 10. We have a daughter. Like, what do you think is the one thing that helped keep your marriage strong? Well, that she understood my goals in photography, right? Mm. And, and my goals in what the kind of work that I ultimately want to put out. Okay. Right? And my wife wasn't interested in a man that was massively macho, right? Mm. That he had a certain amount of sensitivity in him, right? Um, and and uh, you know, I check I, I, I check right. the I check the boxes, right. right? You know, I'm not someone who is you know these are the these are the clear gender roles. You're supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do that. That kind of thing is there's none of those things. It's not get in that kitchen and clean them dishes. One right, type of right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I I wash the dishes. I make the bed. You know, I you. I, I, I do the la you know I do the laundry. You know, I cook. You know, yes. I do all those and things. And there's nothing wrong with that because, like, me growing up, my dad was the primary cook. The only time my mama cooked on, was on holidays. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, it's nothing wrong with that. No, there's not. But um, uh, that's just the way we, the kind of world we live in is um, we get caught on those gender roles. Yes. Which actually kind of leads into my next question. Because you are a, a little bit older, I was just wondering, how do you feel about the transition from film to now everything in photography is digital. Wow, yeah, because I started out in film, right? I yeah. mean half my book is in half my book is in film and half my book is not in film, right? So um I mean and I had to transition and and it's funny because I funny I give you a funny joke. I remember when I transitioned. Right. I I was doing a job for a, a hospital. Right. Um and um, the hospital wanted these pictures where the person's head would be really, really sharp and their body's out of focus, right? And, and it's on my website still today. And I remember the, I, I, had, I got this camera, like if you have a four by five camera, you can tilt the front of the camera and it, do, it makes that effect, oh. right? So if you ever study photography, there's all of this tilt and swing things that four by five cameras do. So I brought in a four by five camera to shoot this job. And the art director of the job, who was, was from St. Louis, because it was for a hospital in St. Louis and we shot it here in New York, they were like, oh, um, you're not shooting digital? I said, no, I'm shooting blah, blah, blah. He said, okay, no problem. And, and the person who ultimately hired me wasn't the, the same art person, director. And he yeah. said, man, you know, he said, you know, Gerard is kind of old school. And literally, literally, the week later, I went out and bought myself my first digital camera, the 5D, you know, the 5D. Now, now, now it's multiple marks and all that. Like four or five. And or whatever, right? right. So, um, you know, and then you had to learn Photoshop. I mean, I think the, 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 the heavy thing was having to learn Photoshop. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only that, but then... Do you think it's possible to get through just on Lightroom alone? Um, no. Just for... Even not even for uh, portrait photography. If, if if you're if you're if you're if you're if you're not tweaking one image at a time, yes. If you batching stuff and all that kind of stuff, then I would say Lightroom, yeah, thing. But I, for me, I have to go into my raw file and I need to mess with the tweaks. I need to m create multiple layers and change small little things even on ball photos yeah 
What do you change on ball photos? Um, lots of things. It looks so natural. I can't really tell. What happens is there, there are a lot of color uh, deficiencies that you need right. to mess with. I got you. Right? To get, like, proper white. Right. So and that's what I would say, right? You, you need to tweak. I need to tweak a whole lot. Right. And there are moments even when I'm... I'm putting mask around stuff. What happens is, especially when I'm doing the, these gray background photos, mm -hmm. because I'm doing it in multiple different places, my setup can't be the same, right? How far my light is away from the backdrop. Yes. All of that stuff matters, right? So for me to make sure that my gray backdrop stays almost the same color and the same darkness, I need so to So that all the images are congruent. Yes, and right. that they need... Because if I'm going to run 100, 120 pictures in a book, they all got to match. Yeah, that makes sense. So one thing about me, like I started taking pictures, I don't know, like probably like 12 years ago, 13 years ago. But I was always taking them with my phone. And gotcha. people used to always try to like literally like hire me. So that's what made me like buy my Boy, first camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... I bought my first camera in 2018. I've ever since like the pandemic, I've been a full time photographer, videographer. Right. And I've been actually surprisingly making a living at it. Right. Right. But I've been kind of running into the thing where there are still some things I just don't know. Right. So I've been kind of um, toying with the idea of possibly going to like a school, like going to school for it. The only right. thing that I'm kind of like apprehensive about is sometimes I'll have people who watch my YouTube channel who are in film school who will ask to ask you what you do. No, they'll ask to like um, be an apprentice. Right, right. And it's just kind of like, you in film school, you're supposed to be teaching me. <laughs> like, right. So I don't know. Right. Do you think it would be worth for somebody who has been doing it for a little while to go to film school or should I just figure it out from here like I've been doing? I think you just need to figure out how you do you how think you're doing it. And your, and your wife is a, is a, is a as a, as a professor, college so. professor, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, right. I'm gonna uh, listen to you. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you, you think got, it'd be you a got, waste of money. I think if you want to just do photography, yes. If you want to teach Go to down the road, then you gotta get degrees. Right. Okay. That's what I would say to you. And and Chicago is a great place. I mean, one of the great African American, two great African American photographers teach, at, I think, at the Art Institute in Chicago, right? Mm. This, this guy named Dawood Bay and another woman named, uh, gosh, what's her name? Something uh, Ruby Frazier. I can't remember her first name I'm right off the bat. But you should look them up. They both teach it, like I said, in Chicago, right. at the Art Institute in Chicago. So uh, if you want to learn what, what would be considered kind of art photography, right. then that would be a great place to go. But if you're doing this, I would say no. I like you know. To, I mean, I always joke with people. Like, I mean, I know for me, like especially around Photoshop, man, the 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 institution called YouTube is you know is uh, is my I'm is my like. university. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I when I want like when I'm stumping Photoshop, dude, I get on YouTube and I'd be like, YouTube. Give me, give me somebody some who actually is going to like a little small university place actually told me, um, because I, I was asking them, like, do you think it's worth it for me? They was like, all they do is just send us YouTube videos all day and we paying all this money. And I'm like, maybe I should. That's why I'm saying I'm kind of like, yeah, I was going back and forth. Like, maybe I should. But what I would say to you is if you want to do. If you want to transition to be a fine art photographer and you want it to end up in your work end up in and museum and gallery a fine art photographer is that you want to end up being in museum and galleries mm. right then you're gonna have to have and it's not so much the 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 skills of of learning the tools mm -hmm. it's about the vocabulary mm. right okay. you're gonna need to learn the vocabulary of how you then describe an image how do you how do you understand the history of photography and that's right. why you say if you want to teach right that, that's why it would be right most so beneficial. i mean what what 
what I learned in school was the understanding of what the history of photography looks like, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so, because then I can, I can, like I said, I can rally off names of people that that's what they do, right? And from from like the beginning of time till now, because I study photography in that kind of way, right? Right. So, you know, I want to to know how this person thinks, how this this person thinks, what does this sound like? Like, I mean, so there's this whole context around the decisive moment, right? Mm -hmm. You need to know what the decisive moment means, right? And yeah. you need to know it from a very, very deep way, right? Mm -hmm. There's a really famous, well, the lover of Annie Leibovitz, who was one of the world great, I think she's, I think she passed away a couple of days, a woman named Susan Sontag. Right. And she wrote a book called The, the Beauty of, or the love of photography or the beauty of photography. I don't think it was one of the two. But you need to read that book if you want to study photography. Because what happens is then it becomes much more of an emotional thing. You then start understanding the emotional parts of making images and what images say, right? Because photography is this three-layer thing. Mm -hmm. And what are you, those three layers? The three layers, the first layer is you taking the picture, mm -hmm. right? The next layer is you then processing the picture. And the third layer is somebody then viewing, viewing the picture, the picture. Right. Right? Yeah, right? Right? Those are the three layers of it, right? right. And Even from film to digital. You it, doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It don't matter. Whatever film, digital, whatever, well, however, it's, it comes through those things. Of course, of course it's di different uh, ways ultimately how people view your pictures, right? Sometimes it's on a video screen, sometimes it's on the back of your camera, sometimes it's on a wall in a museum, right? Or a gallery or whatever, right? Or in a book or, or whatever, right? Right. Wherever they're going to view your picture for the first time. Right. And so you need to know or see or even you should be ahead of the thing because you need to know what you want them to think when you're in stage one, okay. right? Yeah. You need to want them to know what is this going to read like? What is this going to say? And then how many layers of it is going to say? Because I'll give you an example, right? Like my pictures, like when I photograph ballroom, I'm thinking about four or five different um, people that are going to view my picture. I'm thinking about an insider who's actually a ball person who performs ball, mm -hmm. they know a lot more nuances about those pictures than I than than mm. than 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 the the the, the Joe the on the street, person, right? Because right? they might just be like, what the hell am I looking at? Exactly, right? Yeah. And so I have to I have to make pictures for all three of those people. Even the person, like even I'm photographing the the insider. I'm photographing for the person who I would consider just queer. Right. And then I'm photographing for somebody who ain't got nothing to do with ballroom or anything like that, right? right. I'm photographing for all three of those people, right? right? Uh, because, and I want each person to think a certain thing, right? Yeah. Um, and so in turn, that's when I would say studying photography sometimes helps. Right. But from a skill standpoint, if you want to learn skills, school is not. School is a waste. Experience yeah. is probably the best thing. Yeah, okay. exactly. So what, uh, out of all your years of ballroom, you said, I mean, definitely, what, like 30 at least? Yeah, 30 I'm at 29, least. 29, 29, 29 on the money right now. Um, what is your favorite picture, if you could only just choose one? Even if you can't choose just one, yeah. maybe choose a night where you just like, these pictures was like life changing. Your, oh, your wow. magnus opus of wow. your work. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of that for me always starts at the beginning and what I am doing now. Um, I have different ideas about that kind of stuff, right? right. I think differently um, because you know, sometimes what happens is it's just the moment now. Like, I just yeah. think, I mean, you know, gosh, that's a hard question. <laughs> I, 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 I'll answer in two different places, right? Mm -hmm. um, I feel that there have been moments, right? Um, 
there's a there's a one of my favorite images is a, 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 a image of uh, uh, Octavian and Daniel sitting on the judge's table and they're being judged by Tony Revlon, mm -hmm. who is an old ball thing. And, and it's one of my favorite pictures of all time. But, you know, I, I just shot a beautiful picture of, of Balenciaga in a white dress. Mm. Um, that is going to be the cover of my new book, uh, Iconic, that I also think that was a great moment too, right? Oh. That I, f I shot in 2017, where you think the Octavia image was taken in 95. So we're talking 22 years separate yeah, right, from right. two different places, right? So I think there's a certain uh, nostalgia that goes along with the yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that picture, you know, for me, that was the first picture that I said, "Oh man, I like I got what what I wanted. wanted," and I knew it when I shot it. Like I said, "Oh, this is this is going to be, you know, dope," you know, because it was a great moment because it was a it was a femme queen realness. It was in the mock ballroom and. The triple threat. I don't know if you know anything about the triple threat. So Jack is part of what we call the triple threat. When Jack first started announcing balls, there was another gentleman named Eric Bazaar. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of people know Selvin or, or uh, Deborah, MC Deborah, right. MC Deborah, right? They, were, they consider themselves the triple threat. And they revolutionized and uh, Bazaar, he died, right? Yes. Right. He died, I think, 98, 97, 98, 99. One of those three years. And they revolutionized ballroom announcing. Literally revolutionary. I mean, all this rapping stuff these <laughs> young kids do. The triple threat. I mean, MC Deborah is the... the is, the founder of all of that, right? And in some ways, if you think, it's also it was almost like a transition because Eric comes from the eighties, mm. right? Jack was late eighties into the nineties, and and is also now, right? Mm. And 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 Selvin was like raw young kid, yeah. you know. Just blazing, making sounds and noises and rapping, and I mean, was yeah. So, I mean, it to me, I love ballroom. I mean, Jesus Christ, ballroom to me then was just amazing, right? And crazy and beautiful, right? Right? And not only that, but then we didn't have, you know, fifty balls a year. We had maybe 20 right right now you know it's funny i was i was talking to twiggy just now and twiggy was like we gotta we gotta announce our ball two years in advance because we want to make sure that the week that weekend nobody is messing with that weekend and and, and and sometimes like some of these people that don't even have like a really big um big momentum or maybe not even really big names like that People would just say fuck it, and they'll still throw a ball on that same on that same day. Exactly. I like, uh, I'm actually promoting a ball that somebody booked me for, and I'm, I'm seeing like this uh, this city is having another ball. This city having another ball. It's no type of unity. Um, just depending on like now a day like this. Right. It's not gonna be nobody really gonna throw no ball on this day unless it's like a kiki key key ball. Right. But then that's a right. whole different another story. Well, exactly. Well, I mean. I, I was talking to some people. Uh, some people have gone to uh, Germany. They're having a ball in Germany to, today or to, yes, tomorrow, right? I mean, uh, baby, and, and and Shady is in 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 wow. Berlin right now. <laughs> you know, so, so to say, um, yeah. So I, I just think because even to the point, I know like big ballroom people when I chit chat with them. You can't come to every function blazing, so you got to pick and choose which functions that you think. And most of that is all around uh, name recognition, right? So if 
like I said, if the Garcons are doing a ball or, or the Balenciagas are doing a ball or Jack is doing a ball, like people are going to be like, oh, this is the ball to go to because the face, the, the, the eyes of ballroom is going to be on us. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that makes and sense. that's what you want. I mean, if you want to make a statement in ballroom, you got to come out to days like this. Otherwise, you then, you know, then you need to stay in, uh, we, you know, I mean, it, if you think back in, back in the day, you know, you got to stay in the, the, the little league and work your way up and build. I mean, that, that's not, I mean, and that's not a bad thing either, right? right? I mean, you, you're not going to be, a, a, you know, you're not going to be Deshaun Wesley tomorrow. Right. I mean, I met Deshaun when Deshaun was 19 years old. He is not polished like who he is today. That's a 20-year, 15-year evolution, yeah. right? And some kid who is voguing for two years can't vote with that, right? Right, especially on on, on that kind of level, right? Right, not off the gate, right? Right. So I think that's uh, thing. So so when so I think in the in the sense that you try to be a ball. So anyway, for me anyway. You come to balls and you hope for, for moments, mm -hmm. much more than like one ball. But I would say like the Danielle image, because like I said, of who they were, right? right. They were important figures in ball. They were important figures at the time. Um, I think that's the thing. Like you, you want important figures of, of any era. You know, when Andre was doing his thing in the 90s, my God, there were moments when he would do some shit that, would blow your mind like literally i mean i remember one time andre brought in a i don't know back in the day i don't know how i don't know how old are you but you know they used to have those buggies they used to go around central park with the little horse and carriage were you um, young enough to see no see i that? mean i know you're talking about the uh i i mean i don't know about central park but i've, I've seen like horses riding around on the street you get in the not no horse not no, no it, it, but the, with the little buggy right um, a horse with a, uh, a little carriage in the back. Yeah. I mean, right? they still do that, don't they? No. Or maybe before COVID. Yeah. I don't think they do that anymore. They, now they, they just be on bikes. Yes. Yeah. Now they're on bikes. Yeah. I, I, I am old enough to remember that. Okay. Yeah. Right? Andre brought one of those buggies into a ball. <laughs> open, up the, open up the front door. Yeah, the up like, no. Just a buggy, mm. right? Into the middle of the floor and did his thing in the middle of the floor. That's a moment. Yeah. When Deja climbed down, I mean, they still talk about it today. Right. Deja climbed down from the YMCA in, in Brooklyn. Yeah. That's a moment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So those are the, those are the moments that you 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 looking in, looking for the ballroom, right? Right. You know, um, you know to me. You know, if, gosh, I'm trying to think, even like modern day, I remember the Mugler ball, the big Mugler ball that happened in like Times mm -hmm. Square, mm -hmm. and the battle between the girl from who's like a Chanel now out of, from out of California, I think it was like porcelain femme queen face, and the gorgeous Gucci girl, gosh, I'm trying to remember their names. And I don't remember their names now. Lola. What? Lola. Lola, right? Mm -hmm. Lola against the one from California. Right. Well, that's a moment. And and then the girl and the two girls from the Levins one right. end up winning. Right. That's a ballroom moment. Like capturing that moment is I mean, that's why I got a camera. Right. You know? So what do you think is your yeah, they turned off these lights back here. What do you think? Um, is this one thing that you could change about ballroom in four minutes or less? If there's one thing you could change about ballroom, I got one more question after this. Okay, okay. If there's okay, one yeah. thing you could change about ballroom, <laughs> right. what would it be? One thing that you feel like is holding ballroom back in some capacity? Too many balls. Mm. I, I, I answered less than one thing. Too many balls. Yeah. You need to have a calendar. You need to plug your, your your name in the calendar, and you need to be clear about that. 
I don't mind them having regional small balls, mini balls on that day, mm -hmm. but it can't be in the region. Right. You know, it's like if you, there's a ball in New York, there can't be another ball in Philly or the or 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 or, 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 or DC to or, be honest, or Chicago. To I think it's still even kind of disrespectful to have a ball in New York and LA on the same day. To me. Well, I agree. I, I think you can't have a large ball. Like you can have a little mini function or something like that. But you want, and not only that, but to me, now you need to attach the world to it, right? There can't be a ball in, in Berlin, a major ball in Berlin or a major ball in Paris or some shit like that, or a major ball in Miami or like you said, or, 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 or LA. I'm trying to think of the big, the right. big, the big cities, right? Or Chicago. Right. You, you just can't do that. And yeah. so, to so me, the calendar needs to be tightened. So where, because my biggest P is that if you walk this ball and then like maybe six months, ten months later, you walk the ball and you got the same outfit on. <laughs> that is, yeah, okay. and you know that, right? Yeah. That, that, that. That it's just too many. I, I I do think, and that's the problem with having too many balls is because then you can do that. Again, you know, yeah. you you have to spread spread the calendar. I and, think that it's just um you know we in a day and age of you know we got social media we got everything we it's everybody knows that whatever you want to do, do it. So I think that translates to ballroom. So it's just like everybody throws a ball. You got a lot of people that work with these agencies that have a foot in to like, you know, get this money spent. So, right. exactly. you know, I don't know. But you know, I mean, the, the physical responsibility and all that kind of stuff is important, but I don't know so much about um, having major balls. That's why I, I have no problem having small regional balls. Right. Because that same, that same dollar could be spent there because it's still about outreach to, 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 to do outreach to make sure that we're living healthy lives, right? Because right. that's what the that's what the dollars is about, right? It's about living healthy lives, right? Yeah. Teaching them about healthy skills, right? So yeah. some fab ballroom exclusive content on the ballroom scene download ballroom culture tv app right now if you had to pick one person who has been from your point of view who has been the most influential person, does not have to be the most popular person. Right. Who has been the most influential person in ballroom? Wow. That's a tough, tough question. And, I, and I'll, I'll answer it in two ways, right? Okay. Um, it's funny because I remember when people, people have asked me this question before. And I would say the king and queen of ballroom is Andre and Jack. They're the king and queen of ballroom, right? I said, but what I would say is Andre's period is from the 90s till maybe mid-2000s, right? And now, now it's Jack. Right? Jack is the most influential person in ballroom, right? And why do you think that shift happened? Um, because then Jack started, got connected with people in television, right? And... When that started happening, then it just thing and 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 I mean, if you think, I mean, Jack already, you know, used to do voiceovers for the WWE and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so he I didn't know already, that. <laughs> you didn't know that? No. Oh shit! Then and then I'm I'm spilling I'm spilling beans here. <laughs> um, so I think. Um. He already had 
you know, connections already there. And you feel like Andre's influence uh, was more on the performance side. Yes, of exactly. So when he stops performing as much, right? The the it, it kind of it shifted. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, it shifted to to Jack. To me now, Jack is the thing, and because not only that, but Jack spreads his wings so much, right? Mm -hmm. That, like I said, he's doing TV here. He's doing this. He's doing treatments. If if somebody needs a commentator, they need a commentator in, in many different ways. They they get in contact with him, right? right? And I think that influence alone, and not only that. But Jack was smart enough to actually take images too, right? He takes videos. Right. And not only that, but he takes videos up on the stage, right? Mm -hmm. He gets vantage points that shit we don't got. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To be honest, right? Mm -hmm. So he's got exclusive shit, yes. right? Um, and he knows, like I said, he, 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 he knows how to maneuver that stuff so much better. Yeah. Um, you know, not and he uses all the tools, you know. I think um Andre is much more of a a, a, a traditionalist in in the sense of ballroom. Where I think Jack you know, you know, cuz you know if you think like if somebody's having some special ball at the 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 Met, the Museum of Modern Art or some shit like that, they're going to call Jack, right? Because they know He's going he knows how to he knows how to talk to those two audience, right? He needs to talk to the, the, the audience that's the ballroom audience and he knows how to talk to people who ain't got a clue what ballroom is. Mm. Um, and that's why that's what I would say. That makes sense. Okay, so um I got one more question before my uh leaving my, you know, exit question. Yeah. What would you say to somebody that wants to, that's already in ballroom, or maybe not in ballroom, but they're just affiliated with ballroom or interested in being affiliated with ballroom, but they want to become a photographer? What advice would you give them? I always just tell people, buy a prime lens and just go at it. But what, yeah. what, what, what was your... Well, I, uh, I, I think, I think um, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm married to an academic, right? right? So the first thing I would tell them to do is to read, right? Mm. I need them to read. I need them to study shit first. Y'all specifically ballroom or specifically photography? Both. Mm. Right? They they need to get Butch Queen up in pumps, right? There's a book out by a a, a college professor out of Arizona and he actually did his thesis on ballroom on on Detroit. Oh, wow. The the Detroit ballroom scene back in the nineties. Oh wow! Right? I didn't know that. I'm from Detroit. I'm born and raised. Yeah. Right? So it's, and it's called, called Up and Pump. Butch Queen. Butch Up Queen. and Pumps. Yeah. Okay. It's on. It, it, it's in the. It's in the bestseller. Right? Yeah. You, <laughs> I never heard of it. You need to read that. I will. Right? I uh, will. Or, or you need to read that. I do. Or, or whoever. Right? <laughs> whoever needs to read that. Right? Yeah, so. I would say that's the first thing, right? Mm -hmm. I think there's about two or three photography books. Like I said, The Beauty in Photography mm -hmm. by a guy named Robert Adams. I think you need to read that. The Beauty in Photography by Beauty Robert Adams. The Beauty in Photography by Robert Adams, right? Mm -hmm. When we're talking about photography, right? Mm -hmm. Susan Sontag's book that I talked about earlier on, um, The Love of Photography or Photography, right? But it's Susan Sontag. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think I have heard of that before, actually, because that name sounds familiar. Right, and and then you need to get a camera and go at it. Yeah. Right, and then get on YouTube and figure out how to use the tool, because I think the the the, the main thing now. And then I think the other last thing I would tell them is they need to understand the rule of threes, right, and how you formulate a frame, right, and the philosophy behind the frame is that you need an entrance mm. with no exit, right? An entrance with no exit. And because your eye, right, dilates and moves around when it looks at something, it just doesn't come straight on and just stays right there in the middle. 
it bounces around the frame, right? And you're making a two-dimensional thing and you want it to be almost three-dimensional because you want the person to kind of almost suck themselves into your, the image that you ultimately make, right? right. And so you need to understand the, the forces of the threes. And the forces of the threes is the idea of the face. And if you think of design, right, everything that is designed has this formula in it. Cars are designed like this. Trains are designed like this. Boats are designed like this. Planes are designed like this. Phones are designed like this. All is the formula of threes, right? Um, and when you, after that, go at it. Yeah. Okay. So that's dope. Like, I really appreciated having this conversation. It's not like a lot of people who take pictures at ballroom. I mean, it may be. Actually, I think it is. Yeah. But, you know, we don't really hear about them that much. I, I feel like, me personally, I think that photography in general is underappreciated, uh, especially in today's day and world of Instagram right. and everything. Like, you know, we used to people using face apps and... Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's yeah, just yeah. frustrating. Right, not only that, but even softening gels and it's there's multiple uh, things you can do. Um, it irritates me. Sometimes people would uh, pay me to take pictures of their event, and then it's like th their family members jumping in front of me, taking pictures on their phone, and it's just like we, we, we live, in a, er we live yes. in a world where everything is so instant. Yes. Everything is so... Everything has to be perfect to a certain degree. Um, you know, people with the most perfect bodies are on Instagram making their waist smaller on the right. face app. Like, it's ridiculous. Yes. So just to have somebody that understands uh, capturing the world and capturing emotion. Right. I really appreciate it. Um, I really appreciate the knowledge that you gave out here today. Um, I appreciate you just for being in ballroom in general. So... Thank, Thank you, you for taking the time out to do this. Um, my last question I ask everybody okay. is to describe yourself in five words or Ooh. less. Gosh. Um, um, I would say just two words. I'm alive and I'm passionate. That's dope. Thank you. Um, have you ever been like acknowledged with like some sort of status or something or yeah I mean you know they've given me awards uh different houses and and different uh I mean you know uh, but they never like and called you like legendary or nothing like that um no 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 they they never you know no no they have so, so, some some you know uh Caesar's done that and okay so you would definitely be considered an icon or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a, a icon. After right. thirty years, I'm right. I'm, a, I'm thing, but but to some extent, I'm not the first. I, I I always joke with people. I'm the first black person, right, to come in and photograph ballroom in a really serious way. Why do way. you think that is? Now, I right? didn't, I didn't think of this question. But so why that's do what these I, agencies? A lot of these agencies will hire white photographers to come in this space yeah and it pisses me off because they always gone by lss yeah yeah so why do you think they hire these white photographers instead of i do don't you think know. it's just a lack of black photographers no it's, it can't be right um i think first i think the first thing right i mean i'm, I'm just thinking about the people that i know who are before me right um who have we're in ballroom and we're in ballroom. One person has a, a book out, has a book. Um, she's the first person to have a book, right? It's a queer woman from France. Okay. Her name is Chantelle Renault. Okay. Right? Uh, if you go on my, um, if you go on my Facebook page, somewhere in there you'll see it, right? You'll see the image, right? Right? The image of, of, Right, uh, and uh, so, 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 yeah. That's what that's what I would say, right? And I was the first black person. We're talking about early '90s to come into the scene and and 
and, and want to photograph the scene. I also believe that African-American photographers struggled with perception, right? And ultimately, where they were going to ultimately have these pictures seen, right? And what happens is, is, is at the beginning, when I got into photography, most African-American photographers that I knew, they always had to deal with the stigma of white photographers looking at black culture as bad, right? And it being very kind of like, Dirty. you know, the, you know, under so-called white culture, right? And I think they always wanted to kind of show what, what I would say, the, the squeaky clean normalness of black culture. And they didn't see ballroom as, as something as such as that. And um, I'm lucky and smart enough, knock on some wood, that I figured out that that's what you needed to, to, to pull off, right? And that, and that this thing was going to be much bigger than I think it would be, right? Yeah. Um, and so I'm, you know, lucky enough to do that. That's what I meant to, I actually did ask you, but I asked you before we cut the camera on. So I'm going to yeah. ask you again on the camera. What are your goals? I mean, because like at this point, like like I said, some of your images, like I don't really take pictures like that anymore because I'm focused on video. Right. But some of your images are like mind blowing. Like, wow. You know, Thank like you. on the runway and off the runway. Um, and you've been in it for like 30 years. I could probably say any word in a dictionary you could probably pull up a ballroom picture to match it so right, what, right. what more do you want to accomplish um in your career not just specifically to ballroom but just in your career as a whole well i mean you know i, I mean i i mean i i do photography because i want the next generation to study me mm. right i mean that's the and then the all is like i want to be studied in the in the future right so when they when they talk about photography, when they talk about ballroom, they're gonna have to mention Gerard Gaskin's name. Mm -hmm. I have to be honest. Uh, I'm lucky that I'm I'm on that way, but the, ultimately that's what it is, right? But not only in ballroom. You think you're I, on the way? You don't think you're already there? Um, Who else besides you is probably more prominent as a photographer? Uh, yeah, but I think at this next level is is about more about like having we got enough dollars. loud is having the biggest loudest voice, right? right? Like I want it to be worldwide because, like I said, Renault, uh, the Chantel Renault is in Europe. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just had a big show of hers in in Paris, right? There's another guy named Brian who is out of New York. I think, you know, I think they're gonna do a book of his soon mm -hmm. um and I, i'll give you an example the the um there's a huge museum the museum natural history right it's on the west side of uh, manhattan or the west side of central park uh, um did a did a retrospect on queer life in america right or 50 years after stonewall right? And they had a ballroom portion of it, right? Mm -hmm. And they didn't call me, oh. right? Who did they call? They called Brian, the gentleman that I talked about, right? Um, who, who, who I think takes amazing pictures. I'm not against who Brian is. Who do you think is. they should have called you? I mean, if you're gonna, you're not, you shouldn't be only calling Brian. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. That's what I'm saying. And right? he's black. He's a black man too. No. Okay. And that might be. Maybe that's a part of the reason. I don't know. That's what I was about to say. So that doesn't even have anything to do with what you need to do. Right. That's just that particular client, that particular situation. Well, well what I'm saying is, is that because for me, for me uh, being to somebody, me, that, to me, everyone needs to think in those 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 lines, right? Right. The person, the person in at the museum modern art needs to. Think Think in those lines, just like the that any curator who is wants to deal with ballroom, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'll give an example, right? This French company, right, just did a huge retrospect on Madonna, right? Right. So 
they contacted me, right? They did a 10 plays layout in a French magazine that just came out in, in September, right? Mm -hmm. That's how it, I mean, I'm not saying I'm the only one needs to be thing, but to, to, you, to gloss over my 30 years, is is ludicrous, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe the only way that doesn't happen is if my voice becomes louder. When I mean my voice louder is that my name is in more people's mouths, right? And that when they're thinking about Borum and they're thinking about Borum photography, the only person they should be thinking about, and of course that's my bias, you know, just be thinking about me, yeah. right? Yeah, um, I definitely, I, I understand what you're saying. Right. Like, for me, just me being somebody that came from ballroom, and then also me being a photographer as well, I've personally never heard of Brian, but right. I could see where you would say, like, yeah, you need to, you know, make your voice louder. You need to, especially the day and age where we live in of uh, social media followers, how many followers do you have, all that type of stuff. Um I could see where that would be frustrating, but hopefully this interview puts people, you you on more people's radar. Right. Um, you know, so like I said, well, I, mean, I, I, I believe in the in the in the the noise in ballroom. Uh -huh. I mean, my presence run strong, but what happens is is in 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 white spaces, right? They they. They call they call it their, their friend, their brother, their partner, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. and we have to be. I mean, one thing is we need to be in more rooms like that, right? More representation of other people in those rooms, and with that, then my voice will then get wider because of that, yes. right? But if that space is all white, that's why I say I don't think I, it really has anything to do with I know specifically. That. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I understand that. It, yeah, that, that's crazy. Right, I understand that. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I feel like I'm on the way, right? And I, you know, I, you know, I want more. So my, you basically just want to be immortalized for your yeah, work. Yeah, I mean, you want to be a true right, artist in right. every sense of the word. Yeah, and I, like I said, I want when when ballroom is talked about, they got to. They got to say, oh, man, have you ever seen so-and-so's picture? Right. Have you ever seen Gerard Gaskin's picture? Right. Um, and, and then I'm, I'm, I'm good. But, you know, I feel that every photographer wants that, right? Every photographer wants to, to get to a place where the next generation has to study them to really understand, first of all, photography and understand the times that went on before them. Right. Okay. So that that does make sense. I, I I really appreciate you know that wisdom, that insight. Like I said, like you said, we do need more representation. We need more uh, people who can pull strings to get to make sure that our people are acknowledged and taken care of. You right. know. So I really appreciate that. Um, where can people find you at or your like your social media website anything yeah i mean i have a website it's gerard h gaskin photo.com i'm on instagram gerard h gaskin on instagram i'm on facebook gerard h gaskin i'm on twitter gerard h gaskin <laughs> every gerard h gaskin every gerard h gaskin so, uh, everything what, when is your uh, iconic book supposed to come out it's coming out in about two years. Two years, Damn. yeah. It's 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 um it's still in the works. It's still like I still there's still a lot of important people to photograph, right? Like I'll give you an example. Like I haven't photographed this amazing person named Erskine, who's still alive, and he's the first butch queen to walk a ball. Oh wow! Like for me not to have Erskine in my book is what's like his name? what's his last name? He was a Christian. Okay. Right. I mean, his real last name is. Trying to remember er what Erskine's real last name is, but to say Erskine's got to be my book, and I haven't photographed him yet. I photographed him one time. He came to a heritage ball here in New York that Lee Soldier does, but I didn't really get a good enough picture of him. He's in his seventies, and he's the first Butch Queen to walk a ball. Now that's significant yeah. shit. 
So I would I, definitely say do it sooner than later. Yes. Because you never know how long people are going to be here. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and so in turn, I, and, and then, you know, somebody told me about this. There's a, there's a femme queen out in Chicago that's really, really important that I need to photograph. Yes, me. Could be. I don't, I mean, I, you know, I mean, you know. The, the, so what is the planning stages of a book, like a photography book specifically? Man, that's a huge. Do you write the book? Like. Well, I mean, I write the book in, when it comes to photographs, right? I, I write out a, 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 a process. Right? Is there going to be any words in it at all? Or yes. Just photo? Um, there's, a, there's an amazing, the guy who wrote my afterthought in my book is a boy, is, is, I think he's a, is he a garçon? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know what Frank is. But his name is Frank Leon Roberts. That's his real name. He is, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and Frank is going to be writing the words, right? He's ballroom, and he's also a professor at, at uh, did his PhD at, at NYU. Um, and we hooked up back in the 90s. Mm. And I always said to him, anytime I'm doing a book, you got to write it. <laughs> you working with me, right? right, right? right. Uh, and we talked about that back in the 90s, but we're not talking, you know, 22 years later. Uh, and I remember when I got my book deal with, with Duke University, I said, there's no book without Frank. And they were like, no, 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 no. We, we don't want nothing from Frank. Oh, no. no, there's no book without Frank. So let, let's, let's get it twisted. Because the uh, funny thing is I remember the first time we had, we had a meeting at Random House when we were shopping Legendary maybe five, six years ago, five, six years before I got the book deal. So, um, so Frank will, will always do my afterthought. Wouldn't that Especially book like $1,000 or something like that? What's that? Wouldn't your book like $1,000 or something like that? No, no, no. My book is only like 45 bucks. It, now, now, now what happens because it's gone out of print, you, oh. what happens if you go on Instagram because it's out of print, now people are trying to sell it for Ognomis is now surprises yeah, that it on, it's on, oh yeah, dude. Like it's only it was only forty five bucks. If oh. if 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 Duke, of course that's Duke's issue. They did a run. It sold out. They did a second run, but they did a shorter run, and that that ran out within a year, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Big and because ultimately what happened was the the uh, legendary came out. Right. The, the the show the on show. HBO, and then people were like, "So did they take did they bite their title from that and blah blah blah?" And then it got my book blew up because of it. Oh, because of it. That's nice, right? That's right. Dope. Because ultimately, people would then Search Google man. legendary the HB the HBO thing, yeah. and then they would see my book, right? So. Um, that's brilliant. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that's that's on them. I, I didn't. I tell mean, them it just happened. Right. It just happened. Yeah. So then they had another run ran out, right? So now it's run out, right? But to to to, to really do a book, you gotta get 150 great pictures mm. of all of those things that I talked to you about. Like, you need to make sure you know what a twister looks like. You need to know what an elder looks like. You need what a young person looks like. You need somebody who just shows up at a ball, what they look like. Someone who, who's been doing balls for 20 years look like. You need to know who are the stars of ballroom at the, at the particular time. Like, you know, like Twiggy, who we just run into. Like, he, he, he's a, a major focus on ballroom right now, right? Uh, so you need to know. like Or, or Deshaun or... or or, or trace everybody right? like everybody you need to have all of those people in this book right yes and then you need to make sure that you get a good picture of all those people you just can't have some just to have them in there right you got to have a, a picture that speaks to you that grabs you exactly. i got you so yeah i like i said a part of this series is called the interview with jay garcon yeah i have interviewed so many different people right. and everybody is from different walk of life right. i also wanted to interview people that have never walked the ball but are definitely a part of the community right and you check that box yeah um like you said you consider yourself an ally um if i would never even 
asked you that whole line of question, I wouldn't even have even known. I just you just part of the community. You're the photographer. Right. So, like I said, I appreciate you for doing this. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. We 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 we, we gonna make sure that's yeah. gonna happen. That's gonna happen, uh, man. Cool. So yeah, I appreciate you, man. I really, uh, you know, man's got to be in the book, you know. Yeah, like you know, like I mean, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And not only that, but I need to make sure I get a good picture of man in my book, right? Somebody sure. wanted to make a uh, a book that somebody that hired me for their ball, but they only wants to use the pictures from this one ball. I'm like, don't you want to use pictures from like? But he just did not understand that. I was like, no. you don't understand it because you're not a photographer. Right. Like, we gonna only have pictures from this one ball. Some no. people are not going to have a flattering picture. Some, You know what I mean? It was just, but he didn't, did not understand me. And he yeah. thought I was, like, kind of brushing him off. But I really did want to do the book. Yeah. Like I said, when I see your book, I'm like, I don't know. Like, I need to, like, put a few more my, years my, in. My book, my book is 15 years of pictures. And I've been taking pictures since... 2018, 19, like that's not, you know, I probably only got maybe like eight balls under my belt specifically for a picture. So right, 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 right. I, I just felt like it was too soon. Yeah, no, no, no. You, uh, I would. I mean, it, not only that, but you also want your book to be world class, right? You want the book to match up to any other photography book there is out in the market. Whoever shot it, right? If it's some you know, guy from Japan or some guy from Paris or whoever, right? You need to be on that same level, right? You're not taking, you're not trying to take a picture or you're not trying to do a book that's, that's, it's going to be a regional thing, right? You want it to be world, at the end of the day, the idea is you need, it needs to be world class. If it's not world class, then, then scrap it. Like or just keep it for your coffee table. Yeah, or I mean, you know, it's like then when when is when is then why then then you're not making a proper representation of the space, and not you're not even giving homage, proper homage to the people who have then allowed you into their lives, mm -hmm. right? And to me, that's the, the the other part of it, right? Like you want to make sure that that is proper proper representation of their lives right and that is like that they and not only that but they okay the image that you're going to use oh right you i know want to I'm ask saying? that too you right? um you have to like get uh, right. a model release from so every if, single person right if my if man's book if man's gonna be in my book i gotta call a man up and say man i'm using this picture are you okay with that i give you an example right i was doing a book you my, book, my first book right my first right. book I did this photograph of the same the prodigies, right? And they ran, uh, uh, they ran as a house, and they had they had one little Jewish guy who acted like Jesus Christ, right? He got the wig on, he's got a robe like he's Jesus, and he's got all these black disciples around him, right? And he's like this, right? It's an amazing picture. I think it's on my website. But it never got into my book because he turned it down. And I said to him, right? You are no longer an ally to borrow if you're not allowing this image in. Because you're saying that you're, you're bigger than all of the black faces around you. Right? That's what I said to him. Right? So, to say, yes, you have to get a uh, uh, thing. I give you... That I, makes me mad. I don't like that. And it's funny because uh, there's an, another great photograph that's in my book that uh who he was friends of right he's a nurse this guy's a nurse and you know it's funny because uh somebody did an ad about my they, they they ran a story on me and my book this literary magazine and they posted his picture on the cover of the literary magazine but i'm gonna show you a funny 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 thing because I, I i i put it on my website because he can't stop me from putting it on my website. Right. 
you know. Um, you just you can't sell it. I can't sell it. There we go. Oh wow! Right. And I said to him that he he is a disgrace, right, for him to be in ballroom and be in ballroom or think he's ballroom. And it's funny. I'll give you a funny other uh, thing is he also he also wanted me to allow him to write my forward to my book. But then he didn't want me to use the picture. And I was like. So the only thing I could even say to even defend that would be like, I remember one time, a long time ago, I was trying to get somebody to walk a ball and he was supposed to walk realness, but he didn't want to walk realness because they record the balls. Right. And he didn't want his family right. to know about I understand his that. identity or whatever. I understand that. But still, it's just like in today's day and age, like. Well, that's the thing that I said to him. Right. I said this ball, because it's not like I came to him after this photograph was taken right my book came out in two thousand and thirteen two thousand and fourteen oh. I took this picture in two thousand nine oh wow right we're talking ten eleven he's out I mean he's a he was working at Hedrick Martin he's he's out queer man he was not, just being, you like know, you said, it was something funny with that. Right. Yeah. So I was like, and then, like I said, they wanted to write the forward to my book. And I was like, you want to write the forward to my book, but then you don't want to be in my book. Like, so then you want, you want, you want certain representation, you want, right? You want right? writing credits. Right. You want certain representation. And then you're not saying that you're part of it. Like, that's crazy, right? And then to be... You do you know, think ballroom can ever go out of style? Or do you think that ballroom will ever be, like a lot of people are saying, because it's so mainstream now, it's running the risk of being taken by white people? No, I don't think so. I think, I think what's going to ultimately happen, though, is that we're going to have looped down versions of ballroom. But when I think, I think the hope, right, mm -hmm. is that anybody who is ultimately going to do ballroom, there and they're gonna they're gonna actually create categories for a ball and make a, do a ball. They understand the history of ballroom, right? Right, and and they understand the history of the ballroom in a way that's very complicated, so they can make proper categories right and if they can make proper categories then there's no risk to it but if it's some i mean we're gonna always i mean because ballroom is slightly mainstream we're always gonna have what i would call them is showcases it's not really a ball it's a showcase right to 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 some extent bring money in right mm -hmm. and bring and, and to get more visualization right i mean yeah. it's 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 almost in the same context of ultimately what uh legendary on hbo max looks like right like we real ballroom people know that's not real ballroom right but it is a way to then show the world what ballroom looks like to some extent, right? I like some of the nuances of ballroom, right? Yeah. So I think... Um, like kind of sort of like American Idol isn't... You're not going to really get off of there and be like a world-class singer, but it puts you in the feeling of what you will have to, I guess, go through. Right. To be a complete artist, right? Yeah. It, it's helping you in that process, yeah, right? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, and it's just giving you like a, a crash course yeah, in yeah. some degree. Oh, of what it, what it, what it looks like. Yeah. But I mean... I mean, now with social media and like like YouTube, dude, like everybody goes on YouTube and gets and gets ballroom throwbacks and yeah. looks at ballroom tapes and got thousands and thousands of hours of tape yeah. on on YouTube, right? So some kid in in the Philippines and some kid in Argentina knows what a ball looks like already. Yeah. So 
Um, that, like, even on my channel, I always see like my top countries. It's always at least a couple countries I never even heard of. Right. Like, exactly. where are y'all watching I mean, this at? Me and my wife went to South Africa. I did a talk out in South Africa. The the they're doing bars in South Africa. The queer community in South Africa. Ain't it, can't you be killed for being gay out there though? Dude, they got look, they got people w w walking around the streets of Johannesburg in high heel shoes. No. Wow. Now if you if, if some gang and you got affiliated to some gang or something like that, maybe. But not not if you no. Okay. But to say, I I went and I, I saw a show where they show a, a, a trans woman back in the 1960s and 70s in South Africa. So they all, I mean, but like I said, now they're doing balls in South Africa. And I, I almost went to a ball, but what happened was we left Johannesburg and went to Cape Town for a couple of days. And that's like almost like an hour flight. You can't really... Right, commute. So I never ended up going to the ball, but they got in contact with me. Say, oh, we're doing the ball. We would love for you to come. Blah blah blah. We yes. heard you out here. You know that kind of thing. Yes. Um, because of course they followed me on social media. Right. But no, I mean, I think uh, that's a given. I think if it stays true to the roots, and I think these guys, I think ballroom is in the right people's hands. You know, Twiggy, they, they're in the right hands. Right? They're, they're not in. They're not in hands that ultimately. You know, if you think of like jazz music or blues music or hip hop, they were not in ha right hands. That the people who were pulling the strings were not us. Right. But in ballroom, in real ballroom. We're the ones who pull the strings. Right. Okay, I got you. Yes. That makes sense. Yeah. It does. I, I also believe, too, like, when people say, like, oh, the white people finna take it over, I'm like, how? Like, you know what I'm saying? You could binge watch Pose. You can watch every single episode of Legendary and still not know what's really going on in Ballroom today. No. No. So, like you said, we do. Um, but I just want to ask, like, because I've seen that be a lot of, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, a yeah. big no, question. No. Yeah, pe people like to say that. No, no, that's never. Like I said, it's in the right hand. Now, if it slips into wrong hands and we don't know what the future looks like. How could that happen, though? Because even if you had, like, a big corporation that came on and said, hey, we're throwing all the awards balls, you right. know how many promoters would be like, fuck you, I'm still throwing my right. awards ball. Exactly. And well, ain't nobody going to be at that corporation ball. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's, that, that is ultimately the hope, right? And that no one ultimately sells out the rights to balls, right? And I don't Nobody think owns ballroom. That is true. That's the other thing. <laughs> to even sell the rights to it. Exactly. That's another thing. Like I, I was hearing Andre recently say, "Oh, we need like one big board across everywhere, like just one executive board." Right. And that would literally never happen because right. there's too many people that have their own interests in yes. this city, that city, that city, that city, and. It would just never happen. So right. Well, I mean, I think the the, the fear with them is the, this whole icon, legendary, the whole legend statements and stuff, and the that. conflict between that, right? I think that's. Uh, well, I mean, you know, it's like the, you know, I remember Twiggy was talking about the the Mason incident. But you weren't at that ball, were you? I'm, yes. No, I'm glad okay. I wasn't. But I'm just thinking, right? The the Mason incident, right? Yes. Like. There, there needs to be replications on on this kid, who whoever this kid is, who who decides that he gets chopped and he wants to mace people, right? Yeah. So on that level, I can understand that, but you're right in the sense of like they're having, they still wouldn't they still wouldn't ban like it, he's going to be able to walk somewhere. Well, I know that. Like they, I understand, you know that. what I'm saying. And the problem I have with a main board is that people oftentimes operate on their own what they want to do. No so doubt. that could then stifle some other people Very who they so. don't even. You know, so I, 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 I think I, ballroom is okay, like you said, like it is. My thing is, I think balls need to make sure that they always finish. Right. Because that's another thing reason why people. Why is they throwing a the ball in this city? Because 
them people don't want to travel to this city because they're not sure that they're going to be a chance to walk. Right. So now they're throwing a the ball in L.A., New York, and, and Chicago in the same day. For what? Right. Because all these people really don't want to travel. Right. But, hey, if you make ballroom more Yeah, because if they're, gonna, if, they're gonna, if they're going to travel and then their category is not called, like, that's the reason why I never walked in the East Coast like that. The very yeah. first ball I went to was in Philly. Okay. They had every category but mine. Second ball was the Ebony Ball. Right. And you actually go and look on Thug Williams clip or the Ebony Ball, go to the end of the clip. I literally walk out there to battle, right. and they came out from the back, said the ball is over, everybody's smoking. And the clip's just in. And that's a thousand dollars plus that I'm spent on this damn weekend. Right. I never came back to New York. Next time I came back to New York, I was doing video. Yes. Like right. I, right. I can't do that. I, so. I agree. And I you're right about that. But right. so so like say if it's somebody pu pulling strings that say, Oh, y'all can't have no balls in Chicago, that would really fuck it up. And I, I agree, think I Chicago agree. wouldn't go for that. No, so, no, 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 no. Like I said, I, I appreciate, you know, just having your insight, yeah. everything, especially like the photography talk. I hope a lot of people look at this. And if you already don't look at photography as an art, an art form, um, it's, some people just think uh, all you all you do is just pick up a camera and push a button. Anybody right, can do right, it. Right, right, right. It's like, no, it's so, it's so much more to it than that. Very, very it's much about, so. You really have to be... You have to be a person that connect emotionally, I right. think, to be a good photographer. Right. So you be a somebody that is so, I want to say, like, open to the world and just receptive of, of everything that you see and also not discriminative, not yeah. discriminative of what you see. Right. Um, I think that shows, like, how much character you got. Like I said, I even appreciate you just giving back by even sitting down and doing this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope a lot of people really... Especially people in your age bracket, a lot of people didn't make it. Right. So, just to have you here healthy in the same mind, yeah, is a blessing. Thank also, you. Also, just being somebody who's uh, inspired. Like I said, I wanted to do a, a book, and I saw your book. I'm like, wait a minute. I need a few more years. Like, like you said, you wanted to be on par with everybody's shit. Yes. So you somebody that have inspired me and I hope that you know you start to receive more of the roses that you feel like you deserve. Yeah. Um so that when they have these uh museums, the only person they're gonna call is Gerard. So Gerard, I I I, I appreciate you. You are a heterosexual man in a gay space that creates art for us. Yeah. And I appreciate you for that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the iconic, the, the first black photographer in ballroom, Gerard Gaskin. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.